So I wanted to touch on active record validations, and these are an important part of Rails that I think a lot of people maybe overlook in some cases because it's done on the model level is what they at least suggest. So you can do so many types of validation on your app, uh, whether it's front end at the database level, on the model level, on the controller level. But in the end, I think both a, c a combination of maybe front end uh, validation plus model validation, which you get stock with Rails, really make your app secure and allow you to pass the data you only want into your app. So this video is gonna talk about those type of validations, what they are, how you use them, and why you would use them. So ultimately you'd use validations for the sake of only passing in data you want. There's a lot of nasty people out there who want to just you know spam you with bots or whatever, or just give you data that you don't want. And Rails is handy enough to give you everything from on the controller level, permitted parameters, which is a newer thing. Um, and I think Rails 4 at the time. And then now we, well, we've always had validations on models. So combine those plus if you add in say a front end framework or some sort of validation library, you get the best of both worlds. So I'm gonna run through some examples on just some of the, uh, what they're called helpers. So validation helpers that I use on my own projects. So I use these a lot with um, just user related uh, data or just stuff that, you know, has an association but needs some validations. So often you need to make sure fields are have values or the value is a certain length or constraint. The first one I want to talk about is confirmation. And say you have two fields that you want to have exactly the same um, input, you can actually use the confirmation helper uh, just like so. So you'll on your model, you'll go to your user model. And in this case, it's an example. So I'm just going to go through some example models. This isn't a, an app by any means. Uh, say I have a user model and I want to validate the email, but I want an email confirmation field too. So we'd have two, two fields in the end that look like this. Uh, but to use the confirmation, you need to set it to true to first initiate that. But you also need to have presence true in the end uh, to actually make sure that this confirmation helper does its job. So if that weren't true on the front end, if you're rendering your errors in your view, which you can learn more about rendering, they talk about errors on the help docs. If you want to check those out, I link to them in my blog post too. But that you can just pass those into your view. So each time you submit your form, if something's wrong, you'll actually see what's wrong. But you can also check your logs too, uh, if your server is up and you're running locally. So all that aside, you would get a message of some sort saying what's wrong. And that's what we'd get back with the handy errors built into the app uh, and framework. So the next one I use sometimes is exclusion. So say you want to exclude a certain uh, username or some sort of value you don't want to be permitted to your app, say it maybe even a subdomain, something like that, where you have a multi-domain based app, you could you know exclude that from being even created ever. So that's a nice thing to have. Format's pretty cool in the sense of you can pass regular expressions in. Um, you would pass it in using the format method there, and then within a hash, you would perform uh, with. Uh, you could do a within too. It's, it's kind of the opposite of this. So with, you could pass in. In this case, is just only letters, uh, no numbers. Uh, so that would actually output this way. So I should say, with each validation helper, you get this message method on it. And with that, you can actually output a custom message and even the value in some cases, some helpers have that available. So doing that allows you to pass that stuff back and really give your users a better experience when they're entering something that shouldn't be. So length is another one I use all the time. Uh, this one is great for just setting minimums, maximums, or even ranges if you need them. Uh, say you have a like Twitter, a handle, uh, maybe it shouldn't be less than or bigger than a certain number. You can pass in a, a range with just basic Ruby there uh, and the N method. So minimum, maximum, I think are self-explanatory. You just pass a number uh, based on what you want. And then what's nice about these is within that object, you can go and define, like say the maximum in this case, uh, but also these are available to us too, based on what you get. So say if I do a maximum, I have too long available to me. 
and I can go and pass the count uh, based on what I passed here and display that to the front end. So if it comes back and someone enters a bio that's way too long, they will get this message to say why. So that's pretty cool. So that never enters the database. That's way more secure. It's great. Um, presence, this one's an obvious one to use. Uh, at, at best, I would use this everywhere you can in the sense of a field that you want to have required or uh, needs to be with a field on your app. So all you have to, have to do by default is just validate what fields they are or set what fields they are and then set press presence true to that. Uh, you can also do on the association level. So you can just test to see if an association exists. So I would just say validates user uh, belongs to an article. So this essentially looks for a user ID field on the article, assuming you have that set up. And if not, it will kind of tell you. Um, on opposing model, say on the user side, if you have many articles, you can do the inverse of user and perform that same kind of presence check. The uniqueness is next. Uh, this one's pretty great in the sense of just making sure a field doesn't already exist in the database. So a username is a great example of that. I think if you give, if you want your app to have unique usernames, you get that available to you by passing uniqueness true. That actually performs a query on the database to find that field. And if anything matches, um, it will actually say username already taken. You can go deeper here and pass, I think, a scope in the sense that make it either case sensitive or in case sensitive up to you if you want to do that. I think database level at the database level that might already happen. I could be wrong, um, but the docs would probably tell you more. One more th great thing is to provide conditionals within and validation. So say you have some user's card number, um, not necessarily you wouldn't want to save their card number, but just make sure they used a card. Uh, and if they did pay, we could just get the payment type of that card um, just so they have it on file. So maybe they update their card later or something. You can actually tell them what card they used at the time. So they, it's more, um, helpful feedback in the sense of they don't pass the wrong card in, say it expires or something. Um, grouping conditionals. So you can do quick one-liner methods like this, or you can go in with options, do the same thing and group certain things together. So say you have a lot of fields and you're an admin, um, you want to onboard a new admin user, you want to get their location and job title just to make, make um, that data available to admins. I don't know, some instance like that. That would allow you to do something um, in a group fashion, which is pretty great. So it's kind of like an each group, um, but you're just doing it with options here. Uh, so behind the scenes is doing F if checks on each of these. And then finally, you can provide your own custom validation. So say you just have a method that uh, just checks something. So say a subscriber is active in this case and you call the validation active subscribers. So doing so, this would point to this and um, the on option here actually tells rails to use only this method uh, to perform this validation. So you can actually pass that through on any method that you have in your controller. So say it's update or create or um, I don't know, new or destroy, I guess that'd be kind of an odd one. But in doing so, you can specify exactly where to validate, which is very powerful. Um, and then the method here, we also hook into the errors API bit from rails. Um, there's already a collection of errors waiting. So like behind the scenes, there's like a errors um, collection. So it'd be like something like that, uh, waiting for input for these. Once something happens or triggers a validation, you can actually append to that and promote what's going on. So here you can add this symbol. Um, in this case, we can say which active cover customer it is, and then just say they're not active. In essence, you can hook into the errors library on your own for these custom methods there. It doesn't come stock like it would with some of these other ones that are built into rails. So when you define your own, you need to kind of append uh, your own feedback to the loop. So that's kind of a quick run through of validations. Um, hopefully it's useful. I know it wasn't like a real world put it to use example, but as I build these apps and stuff on my channel and my blog, you'll see me add these and I never really covered them. So I wanted to kind of give a quick, quick feedback or quick, um, 
give a quick run through of what they are and how you can use them. There's there's a lot more on the, the documentation you can use. Um, it gets pretty deep, so you can even go and customize the errors, how they display, what they look like, all those things from the model level. Definitely check out the guides. This stuff is, is gold. Sometimes it's boring to read, but I figured a video of some of the same concepts is more useful in this case, me talking you through it as opposed to you trying to understand it on your own. So uh, with that, Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hello Rails is my new course on Ruby on Rails. I'll teach you Ruby on Rails from the ground up. Visit hellorails.io for more information.